choices. We make them with each new day. The living God has given us the freedom to choose. We can love Him or reject Him. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What choice will you make today? The title of this message is Make Jesus Your Shepherd Today. Make Jesus Your Shepherd Today. The close of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make Jesus your shepherd today. He loves you more than life itself. He's been waiting on you for a long time now. And His Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. He's been drawing to you, to Jesus, to give your heart, give your life to Him today. Don't put Him off any longer. Eternity is way too long to be wrong. Our text for this message is found in Psalm chapter 23. Make Jesus your shepherd today. Psalm chapter 23. God's great shepherd David states, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Would you pray with me? Father, in Christ's name, we praise you that you knew that we would be here before the foundation of the world. Father, I'm aware of the assignment that is before me. Empty me of myself. And fill me with nothing but your powerful Holy Spirit, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Father, may not one word leave my tongue, but that it does not first come from thee to me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Dr. Charles Ryrie states, and I quote, In his most beautiful song of trust, David pictures the Lord as the great shepherd, who provides for and protects his sheep, and is a gracious host who protects and provides abundantly for his guest. The figure of a shepherd depicts the Lord as guide, protector, and constant companion. End of quote. Is the Lord Jesus your shepherd? On a hot summer Sunday night in 1965 at the age of eight, with my dad by my side, I got down on the altar at the Fairview Bible Baptist Church in Morristown, Tennessee, and I repented of my sins, and I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus became my Savior and my Lord on that night. And I praise God that I've never had any doubt that I was truly transformed by the power of God. And all these years later, Jesus is still my shepherd. I am eternally secure. He will always be my shepherd. And I will never, ever be taken out of His hand. Nobody or nothing can take me out of the hand of the Lord Jesus. Is Jesus your shepherd today? At the close of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. I plead with you, with all that is within me, make Jesus your shepherd today. How do you do it? You've got to know that you're a sinner. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. You've got to know that Jesus loves you. Romans 6, 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You've got to know that Jesus died on the cross for you. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8 and 9, that God commends His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. And then to be born again, to make Jesus your shepherd today, you've got to repent of your sins. Repent means change your mind about your sins, ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, and then you turn from your sins. The Bible says in Acts 3, 19, Repent and be converted that your sins will be blotted out when the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And then to be born again, to make Jesus your shepherd, you must accept Him by faith. Faith is believing even though you cannot see Him. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, 
and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is God's love for you and for me that we do not deserve. And because of his love for you and for me that we do not deserve, and our faith in him, we can be saved. You can't save yourself. I can't save you. Only Jesus can save you today. And then to be born again, you must believe in the biblical and historical fact of the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made and the salvation. And then one of the greatest verses ever written says that to be born again, you must believe without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus will never, ever reject you. He's never turned anyone away, and he's not going to start with you on this beautiful day. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do today at the close of this message is to call on Jesus, and he will become your Savior and your Lord and your shepherd for the rest of your life, and you will live with him when you leave this temporary life as we know it today, forever and ever, throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity in the place called heaven. David, when he wrote Psalm 23, had a keen understanding of shepherding. His Lord literally found him as he was, as he was a teenage shepherd boy, tending to his flock of sheep, and God called him, and he anointed him to be the king of Israel. We read about this story in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 through 13. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. A title re repeatedly applied to Jesus in the Bible is the son of David. A comparison can also be made in the fact that Jesus came as a shepherd, just as David had been a shepherd. In John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus states, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Jesus died on that cross for you. He died for me. He died for the sins of the world. You learn how to do a particular job by learning to work at the very bottom of the totem pole. And David, God's great shepherd, learned how to be a real shepherd of God's people by being a young shepherd boy. God, the great shepherd, taught David the leadership skills that he needed to shepherd his people, the children of Israel. Psalm chapter 78, verses 70 through 72 states, He also chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes that had young, he brought him to shepherd Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. David keenly understood that the role of the shepherd is to protect the sheep. A sheep is one of the most unwise of creatures. It will go anywhere except in the right direction. It will leave a fat pasture to wander into a barren one. It will find many ways, but not the right way. It would wander through a forest and find its way through ravines into the wolf's jaws, but never by its wariness turn away from the wolf. It could wander near his den, but it would not instinctively turn aside from the place of danger. It knows how to go astray, but it does not know how to come home again. When a sheep is left to itself, it will not know in what pasture to feed in summer or where to retire in the winter. That's why God's people need to be led by the shepherd. The shepherd, the shepherds in our day are the pastors. God called David to lead his people. David was a shepherd. The shepherd defends the sheep in 1 Samuel 17, verses 34 through 36. The shepherd waters his sheep in Genesis chapter 29, verses 2 through 10. The shepherd feeds his sheep in John chapter 21, verses 15 through 17. The shepherd gives rest to his sheep in Jeremiah 33, 12. The shepherd knows his sheep. In John chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, the shepherd searches for the one lost sheep. 
In Luke chapter 15, verses 4 and 5, and the shepherd is faithful. The shepherd is faithful. In Genesis 31, verses 38 through 40, the shepherd is fearless. The shepherd is unselfish in Luke 15, verses 3 through 6. The shepherd is considerate in Genesis 33, verses 13 and 14. And the shepherd is believing in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. The young shepherd boy, David, had great confidence in his shepherd, the Lord Jesus, and so can you. David is the only man in the Bible whom God called a man after his own heart. And he boldly proclaimed, the Lord is my shepherd. Make Jesus your shepherd today. You'll never ever regret repenting of your sins and giving him control of your heart and of your life today. In John 10, 14, we read that Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd who came to live and die for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world in Hebrews 13, 20. And then in 1 Peter chapter 4 and in John 3, 16, Jesus is the chief shepherd. He said of himself, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. We are the sheep. Jesus is our shepherd. And he will do all that it takes to bring us into his fold. In Luke 19, 10, we read the story of Jesus finding a despicable tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus. And he, and he drew Zacchaeus to himself and he forgave Zacchaeus for his sins. And after he did that, he said of himself, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is seeking to save the lost sheep 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year because He loves you and He cares for you and He wants you to be a part of His fold. He loves us. David boldly proclaimed, The Lord is my shepherd. Make Jesus your shepherd today. And then today, let's look at the names of God in this beautiful Psalm 23. Let's look at the names of God in this beautiful Psalm 23 as we look at Jesus being our shepherd today. First of all, Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Ra, the Lord is my shepherd. David said that. He employed the figure of a shepherd to recall the blessings that he had enjoyed from the Lord. The metaphor was a natural one for David, the shepherd king. It was also a common metaphor in the ancient Near East as many kings compared themselves to shepherds in their leadership capacity. The prophecy of the coming Messiah incorporated the same. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 11 states, He will feed His flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with His arm and carry them in His bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Jehovah Ra. The Lord, my shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Then secondly today, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. David said, I shall not want. Because the Lord was David's shepherd, his needs were met. The living God provided for Abraham as he was about to offer his only son Isaac as a sacrifice. And we read this beautiful story in Genesis chapter 22, verses 11 through 14. The Bible tells us that the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And so he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you've not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. There behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorn horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide as it is said to this day. In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. David said, I shall not want. And then thirdly, Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. David said he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The first blessing that David experienced was spiritual nourishment. As a shepherd leads sheep to fresh grass for feeding, so the Lord leads His people. One who follows the Lord does not lack any spiritual nourishment. God's great servant Gideon, 
asked for a sign that God had clearly spoken to him. And we read this beautiful story. In Judges chapter 6, verses 20 through 24. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread and the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that the, he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it is still an Ophrah of the Abezerites. The shepherd feeds, the shepherd leads the sheep. In the same way, the under-shepherds, the pastors, are to feed and lead the sheep, God's people. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which He purchased with His own blood. Food for the soul is the Word of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, that you may grow thereby. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. David knew what he was talking about when he said he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And then number four, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. David said, he restores my soul. He restores my soul. A second blessing that comes from the Lord's leading is spiritual restoration. As a shepherd leads his sheep to placid waters for rest and cleansing, so the Lord restores or refreshes the soul. Here the spiritual lesson is clear. The Lord provides forgiveness and peace for those who follow Him. Moses cried out to the Lord for pure water for the children of Israel to drink. In Exodus 15, verses 25 and 26, the Bible says, So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. David said, he restores my soul. And then fifthly, Jehovah Sidkenu. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. David said, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The third blessing that comes from the Lord's leading is guidance in the right way. Guiding us in the paths of righteousness. A good shepherd knows the right path on which to bring the sheep home safely. And so too the Lord loses none of his sheep, but guides them in the right way. He does so partly because of his reputation, meaning for his name's sake. In Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6, the Bible says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. You're eternally secure in Christ. You can never ever be taken out of his holy hand. Make Jesus your shepherd today. And then number six, Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord ever present. David said in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Ezekiel speaks of the new Jerusalem in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35. All the way around shall be 18,000 cubits, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. The fourth blessing from the Lord's leading is protection. If we find ourselves in a valley of deep darkness, and we do as fallen sinful human beings, if we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have anything to fear because the Lord Jesus is with us. He will walk with us, and He will protect us and care for us. 
the rod and the staff are the shepherd's equipment to protect the sheep in such situations. David was comforted by the Lord's presence and protection. Believers are never in situations the Lord is not aware of, for He never leaves, He never forsakes His own people. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conduct be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For He Himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Make Jesus your shepherd today. And then number seven, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. The Lord our banner. David said in Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of of my enemies. This verse, the scene changes to a banquet hall where a gracious host provides lavish hospitality. Under this imagery, the psalmist rejoiced in the Lord's provision. What was comforting to David was that this was in the presence of his enemies. Despite impending danger, the Lord spread out a table before him. God provided for him. God gave Joshua and Moses victory over the Amalekites. He gave David victory over his enemies, and he'll give you victory over your enemies. I know. The Bible says in Exodus 17, 15, and 16, and Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. For he said, because the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. The seven names of God in the 23rd Psalm. First of all, Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Secondly, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. David said, I shall not want. Thirdly, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. David said, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And then fourthly, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. David said, He restores my soul. And then fifthly, Jehovah Sid Canu, the Lord our righteousness. David said, He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. And then sixthly, Jehovah Shammai, the Lord ever-present. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you're with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then number seven, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. David said, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Then David closes out this great psalm with this, You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. This is once again Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. The image of anointing the head with oil, which was refreshing and soothing, harmonizes with the concept of a gracious host welcoming someone into his home. It was customary in hot climates to anoint the body with oil to protect it from excessive perspiration. When that oil was mixed with perfume, it imparted a delightfully refreshing and invigorating sensation. Athletes in Old Testament times, anointed their bodies as a matter of course before running a race. As their body therefore was anointed with oil, it was refreshed, invigorated, and it was better fitted for action. And God promised David so he would anoint him. He would anoint his sheep with the power of the Holy Spirit, which this oil symbolizes to fit them to engage more freely in His service and to run in the way that He directs in heavenly fellowship with Him. In view of the table and the oil, David knew that his lot in life was an abundant blessing from the Lord. Psalm 23, 6, David closes that beautiful psalm out with great confidence in the Lord. And he says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. Yes, David knew without a shadow of a doubt that his Lord's good and loyal love would go with him everywhere that he went all throughout his life. And today, God's blessings remain with his people no matter what their circumstances may be. So David concluded, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The house of the Lord referred to the tabernacle, to God's sanctuary. And for the rest of his life, David would enjoy full communion with his Lord. Make Jesus your shepherd today.
David knew what he was talking about when he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Right there where you are today, uh, the Lord Jesus loves you. <laughs> and He desperately and passionately wants to become your shepherd today. I want you to stop what you're doing right now. And I want you to pray with me right now. You just, you pray right now. The Lord Jesus has been speaking to you for some time. Today is your date with destiny. You pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the peace that I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You've been instantaneously transformed by the power of God. You've gone from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You've gone from traveling the road that's paved in eternity in hell to traveling the beautiful road that's paved to eternity in heaven. You're forgiven. Jesus has written your name down in his Lamb's book of life in heaven. It will never, ever, ever be erased. And you are eternally secure. You can never, ever lose your salvation. I want you to write to me today and let me know of your decision. I have some materials that I want to send to you. And be sure and get involved in a good, balanced, Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. Baptism is your next step after salvation. I love you. I thank God for you today and for what He's done for you. God bless you.